Green Giant. Before I get into this video, I just want to let you guys know I'm almost at 40k. So if you guys haven't subscribed, please make sure you do. We're trying to get to 100k. Just to let you guys know, I'm not going in order of the drafts. I'm just going randomly. Now, at number one, I have OG. And personally, I wouldn't mind if the Heat drafted him at number 14. I mean, he's mainly a small forward, and I'd rather us get a power forward. But let's not even get into that. That's a whole different video. But obviously, these are just ratings. And for right now, his offense is pretty good. But I mean, he's really just a defender. So I don't want to rate him too high. So I give him a 72 overall if we're going by last year's two. 2K ratings. Big Zoe, Lonzo Ball. I give him a 74 overall, and this is why. Don't kill me, guys. I know some of you guys want him to be a 99 overall, but I mean, listen to me. I feel like Lonzo Ball is a facilitator, therefore his offensive stats are going to struggle until he proves himself in the NBA. I mean, that is the main thing that everybody's worried about, right? Can Lonzo use this shot that he has in the NBA? I think he will be able to. At first, maybe not. 74 overall is what I give him. Josh Jackson might end up being one of my favorite people in this draft for this reason. The NBA is so oversaturated with point guards that small forwards really aren't winning that much. I mean, look, I know there's LeBrons, there's Kawhis, there's, you know, maybe Mellows, there's KDs. I know. I'm not saying that there's no good small forwards in the league, but I'm saying that the NBA is point guard dominant now. So I feel like a small forward can really make a huge difference on a team. Think about it. All the really bad teams have no small forwards. So with that being said, I would think it would make the most sense to give him one of the highest overalls in the draft. Now, obviously, overalls change as 2K updates. So I feel like at the end of the year, Josh Jackson might actually have the highest one. To a lot of people, it's a no-brainer to draft Markel Fultz number one. Now, I feel like the Celtics should uh, mess with the Lakers a little bit and, you know, try to get, you know, D'Angelo Russell for uh, Alonzo. But that's besides the point. We're not getting into all that. So I feel like Markel's going to come into 2K with a 77 overall. Now, I was thinking 80. Personally, I was thinking 80, 81. But I feel like that's a little too high for a rookie. He hasn't proved anything yet. Usually 2K is in the 70s when it comes to rookies. This year is supposed to be a very stacked draft. So maybe they might be a, a, a little less stingy with the overalls and throw out an 80. But just to be safe, I'm saying Markels are going to be a 77. Deary and Fox can score. I mean, we saw what he did to Lonzo when they played against each other. So I feel like 2K is going to have his offensive stats kind of high for a rookie. So that's why I gave him a 76 overall. Now, do I think that he's the second best in the draft? I think that Lonzo is very good and that Lonzo should be the second overall pick. But Darian Fox, I mean, he has an upside. I wouldn't be mad if we ended up with him, but I mean, our pick is very low. So that's probably not going to happen. This is probably one of the worst times to make this comparison, but I feel like Malik Monk is like a J.R. Smith with a pretty decent upside. Like, when the dude is going crazy, he's going crazy. But uh, when he's off, he's off. So, 73 overall sounds more than fair to me. I think he probably will go mid-lottery, so anywhere from like 6, 7... I think around there is probably where he's going to land. So 73 sounds good. I mean, he has a, a, a chance to raise his uh, 2K rating like Whiteside said. So who knows? But that's what I think. That's what I think he's going to have. If for any reason Pat Riley figured out how to use YouTube, I know he's like 175 years old and probably has no idea how to use that. And if for whatever reason Goran Dragic just happens to be watching this video, uh, Goran, please uh, turn off the video. Please subscribe, Goran, but please turn off the video. Um, Pat, I'm gonna need you to trade Goran, our pick, and um, whatever else you need to do besides Whiteside and my man's Dion. And uh, please get Dennis Smith because this dude tore up his ACL. Pretty sure twice. I don't know. I, I think it was twice. And he's still balling. I mean, look, ACL tears are, you know, they're not a thing to play with. But low key, I mean, is it a heavy risk to draft this dude? I'm, I'm turning this into a recruitment. Y'all see the overall on the screen, but low key, I want this dude on the heat. This dude's kind of like in a position like Porzingis uh, last year. There's not much film of him or anything on YouTube or on the internet that you can find. I mean, obviously there are some things out there, but I don't know where to rank him. All I know is that he is a decent scorer and that his three-point shot is okay, I guess. I, 
I don't know. For those of you who have great knowledge on mans, please let me know. But I would go conservative and just say 73. Usually when somebody is neither bad nor good, they are either a 72 or 73. Hey, Olivar, you want to come in here?